something I'm very interested in and I've, I'm starting to experiment with is the, how should we say, the effect of um, high frequency sound on bees, ultrasound in other words. And there is, uh, the, my interest in this is uh, in several veins of thought, should we say. One is that we know that every living object and every static object come to that has a resonant frequency. In other words, there's a frequency at which if you project sound waves onto that object, it will vibrate in harmony with those sound waves because the, uh, the, the, the body of the object um, oscillates at that frequency, for example, when you hit it. So for, uh, I suppose a good example of this would be a musical instrument like a let's say a triangle where you you hit the triangle and it resonates at a certain frequency and that is its resonant frequency so everything has a resonant frequency some things more obviously than others there have been famous cases where uh, bridges have collapsed for example because the traffic over the bridge has happened to hit the resonant frequency of the bridge um, or or indeed the the um, the oscillations caused by the wind has hit the resonant frequency of the bridge and it has um, oscillated to the point where it has actually collapsed. There are lots of other examples of this that you, I'm sure you're familiar with, so I don't need to labor the point, but let's start with, let's start with a very simple little experiment here. Um, what I've got here is a bat detector that I built yesterday from a kit. It's a fairly straightforward electronic kit. If, you're, if you have any kind of electronics um, kind of experience, you'll recognize this sort of layout. Um, what it does is to generate a frequency that is close to that which you're trying to measure uh, and then the difference between the actual frequency of oscillation and the frequency that this is generating is translated into audible terms so um, maybe that was a little bit too technical for some people but essentially what this does is change very high frequency sound that we can't hear into um, normal frequency or our audible frequency sound that we can hear. So, so what I've done here is, uh, is I'm putting the, um, the external microphone close to the speaker of this device such that you hopefully can hear what's coming out of the speaker when I put it near the beams. So what does that tell us? That simply tells us that bees do emit ultrasound. They, they do actually produce high frequency sounds, presumably by the movement of their wings. Now, of course, that doesn't tell us very much about the, um, the actual frequency that they're producing uh, because this, is not, uh, this device here is not actually yet calibrated properly in terms of um, cycles per second or or Hertz, which is the, the, the name that we tend to use now for, um, for cycles per second. So it's probably in the order of 30 to 40 kilohertz, that would be my guess. And uh, that's a, that is a, a pitch, a frequency that we can't hear with a human ear. Um, most, people, most people's hearing is in the sort of few hundred kilohertz up to maybe 10,000 uh, sorry, 10 kilohertz, which would, uh, and, and it can go up to, I think the, the official designation of um, audible sound is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is 20,000 hertz cycles per second. Um, so so the, the, the bees could be generating a sound um, roughly twice that frequency, around 40, 40 kilohertz. So that doesn't tell us all, an awful lot, really, except that we, we can tell that bees are producing high-frequency sound. Now, it could be um, that if we could uh, calibrate this, this device or, an, or a similar device and put it inside the hive, we might better learn something by listening to the uh, actual frequencies that bees do produce under different conditions. So, for example, do they make different sounds when they're hungry or when they're... Um, when they've got plenty of food? Do they make different sounds when they are uh, in, shall we say, normal conditions and when they're in abnormal conditions? We do know from the work of a BBC sound engineer, 
um, back in the 1950s that the they do make different sounds or they appear to make different sounds during the process of swarming. He found that he could actually predict uh, swarming uh, roughly a week or so ahead by the change in frequency given off by the bees. Now that is potentially extremely useful device uh, to have. In fact, he invented a device called the Apidictor, which did exactly that. Now, a number of these devices were produced. I believe a number of beekeepers may even still use them. Um, there, there have been other way, uh, attempts to modernize the device and market it. Doesn't seem to have really caught on. Um, I do have a couple and I will, be, uh, I will be testing them shortly and maybe making a video about that. So that's one aspect of, of sound in which, uh, which could be very useful to beekeepers if we could refine that, that research a little bit and find out more about the sort of sounds they produce, how to measure them, how to monitor them and so on. Another potentially important use of the resonant frequency idea is that because the varroa mite is much, much smaller than the bee, it will have a much higher resonant frequency than the bees do. Now, the implications of this uh, should be fairly, fairly apparent in that if we could generate a, an audible or rather a, a sound frequency that is um, in the narrow range that will be resonant for varroa mites, we could potentially build a device that emits uh, a frequency in that range and that would in fact cause the varroa mites some considerable distress, it may even cause them to uh, become non-reproductive, may even kill them, who knows. Uh, obviously at the same time we need to find a, a frequency that does not cause any damage or distress to bees. Now, I honestly don't know whether that's feasible. I don't know whether that's possible. Um, we can only discover that by research. That's one of those things that we have to experiment with. Now, it's perfectly easy to build um, ultrasound devices. Uh, I should be doing that myself. Uh, and we can do some, run some simple experiments if we can get hold of some uh, varroa mites to test. We can we can easily establish, relatively easily establish, roughly what their resonant frequency is likely to be. We can do the same thing with the bees, of course, and we can, to some extent, possibly uh, consider what the implications might be in terms of. Um, is this likely or is it apparent that it might cause distress or injury to bees? If not, there could be there's a potential for a very simple device that could deal with Varroa uh, in a non-chemical, non-invasive, well, okay, I'm using that, that term invasive kind of flexibly, but um, something that could be applied to a hive very simply, very quickly, very easily and cheaply that could um, deal with the varroa problem without causing any problems for the bees, any additional problems for the bees. So that's my thinking at the moment. And of course, the other potential idea is to use ultrasound as a, how should we say, a bee repellent. If we could find a frequency that was um, just annoying enough to bees that they would prefer not to be near it, then we could carry such a device around with us and we could potentially even use it instead of uh, smoke, which is the, which is the uh, standard bee repellent, if you like. And we could possibly devise a ways of um, managing bees using ultrasound, which are less harmful or less problematic to the beekeeper at least, than trying to keep a, a smoker alight, which is everybody who's tried it is a, a nuisance to put it mildly. So that's the thinking at the moment about ultrasound. And I don't know how that's going to develop. That's just another one of my crazy ideas. So I've no idea um, if there is anything, any substance to that. It's purely, um, purely hypothesis at the moment, but I'm hoping to do some experiments. I'm hoping to make some more videos. And if anybody else has any ideas about this or any, any actual specific scientific knowledge would, it, would be even better actually, um, then please put them in the comments below because I would like to hear or, or, or a range of opinions on this. And I shall be doing another video very soon.